we're at war all the time, still today. After thousands of years, we still go to war. We still are, uh, you know, people that like to fight, to conquer, and that's the way we live. One thing that we thought at the very beginning was, what if war wasn't against one society against another, one religion against another, you know, one people against another people? What if we segmented the race that we are and formed something that is partly us, but not really like us? The half-breeds were formed out of that. By this point, hundreds and hundreds of years of, of struggle has already kind of occurred between humans and the half-breeds. Basically, our story kind of paints them as another top-tier predator just like man is. The half-breeds are based on lore that exists from stories that were told in different countries, in different civilizations, societies. In our world, werewolf is something that came from a lore that they probably believed in thousands of years ago when it actually was a half-breed, an evolution of mankind. They still are uh, I would say anatomically similar to humans, but they have, you know, there's obviously, they're much taller, they're bigger, they have hides that are thicker, their musculature gets slightly augmented. The reason why the lichens and that particular species of half-breed is a threat, it was a question of understanding what it was about the werewolf lore that is as intelligent as you are, but is as bestial as a wolf could be. I think, to me, the most terrifying thing is that we try to basically always have some degree of a performance in them that carries a level of intelligence. They are smart. I think, to me, that's actually the scariest thing about them. And when something can look at you, size you up, and be at your equal, if not above you, I think it becomes very, very scary. <laughs> We really tried to capture the right balance of both human lupine anatomy and that level of imperfection that makes it not feel like this kind of action-y comic book creature and much more like this is a creature that could have existed that we just haven't seen yet. The anatomy has to be right. If it doesn't look like it's built for the purpose that it needs to serve, it's going to look kind of artificial. You know, you don't want something to look like a man in a suit. You don't want something to just have weird kind of bones jutting out of it just because that looks cool or scary. Also trying to retain a sense of the person. We didn't want this magical transformation from specific guy to generic scary creature. We wanted a sense of who that person was still kind of transferred into the lichen anatomy. We knew that one of the kind of the pillars of the game was that we not just have lichens, but we have the ability to transform a human into a lichen or vice versa. We wanted no cheats. We wanted continuous no cut shots of this happening. And so what that means is actually transforming the anatomy. <laughs> blood from the heart, through the veins and arteries. You kind of see this chest expansion as if maybe the lungs, the rib cage, and then all the rest of it as it's being carried through the blood kind of moves outwards to the extremities. The hips, the pelvis, the big toes of the, the humans actually morphs and migrates back to the dew claw. Everything is very, very different from how the thing is structured. Finding 3D topology that allowed us to achieve that was, was quite a process. And then the hair growth was another challenge. As they're transforming, a mostly bald human is now transforming into a very hairy dog, cat-like creature. On top of that, the skeletons of both characters are actually animating and transforming along with this blend shape. On top of that, the materials are animating and blending between the human state, sort of an in-between transformation state and the lichen state without any tricks or gimmicks. I think that's something that people are going to be really kind of excited about. You know, there's that moment where you're like, oh man, turning into a lichen, this is awesome. And so we wanted to make sure we play that up. But once you feel like that thing makes sense and that it could really stand in front of you, I think there's this whole other layer of kind of emotion that sets in where you're like, wow, that's not just this thing that I take for granted as being a monster or something just, ooh, scary. It's like. That maybe could be something that, you know, we just haven't found in the world. They're in hiding, we don't know where they are. It's always a struggle because everybody was like, should we push it a little more? It's like, no, you know, guys, let's make it believable. Let's keep it in the realm of what people are gonna say. You know what, I don't believe in them, but if I did, that's what I would have believed. 